Rumors are swirling about Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s possible VP pick and former Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Has she entered the chat? One user posted a source with connections to the Robert Kennedy Jr. campaign has told my ex-group of Kennedy 24 supporters that his rumored VP announcement date happens to coincide with his trip to Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, if this tidbit is true, then we can absolutely expect and assume Tulsi Gabbard will be the vice presidential choice of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. With her embrace of the center right these last few months, this very well could be a safe move for the Kennedy campaign. But just this morning, Gabbard announced a new partnership with Twitter or X. Let's watch. Free speech is something that a lot of us have taken for granted throughout our lives. It is fundamental to our rights that we have as Americans. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Lifting up your voice in dissent or challenge or questioning or even having a dialogue and debate is not only discouraged, it can be cause for retaliation or cancellation or censorship. We must defend our right to free speech. Now, RFK Jr. continues to be a craw on the side of both Joe Biden and Donald Trump, as he seems to be the strongest third party candidate since Ross Perot, while former President Trump still leads Biden overall. In Arizona, RFK has a respectable 10 percent support, in Florida, 9 percent, in North Carolina, 11 percent, and in Michigan, 9 percent. RFK is even putting up solid numbers in places where Biden leads. In Virginia, RFK Jr. has 14 percent approval. Those numbers come from both Biden and Trump, as without RFK Jr. in the race, Trump and Biden both gain 7 percent support. So he's mm. stealing equally from both candidates there. But the big news here is a potential Tulsi Gabbard, VP. Let me put this to you. I understand that why that would be very exciting to the 10% of the public that already likes RFK Jr. Is it broadening the coalition at all to pick someone who is so kind of occupying the same online um, and rhetorical space, a lot of issue overlap with respect to some of the independent COVID um, critiques of the deep state type moves, critique, critiques of war, very, very similar space. Is it actually going to improve his chances and generate excitement here? Look, I see what you're saying. There is so much overlap. One wonders if it's a missed opportunity to bring in new people. But Tulsi Gabbard, extremely popular with um, a lot of conservative uh, voters, uh, audiences, et cetera. She's on Fox News a lot. I believe she's a Fox News contributor now. Um, she's, she's well known to the right. She obviously comes before that from uh, the Bernie Sanders left, from your own worlds. Um, you know, she has, I, I think, a number of political positions that are, uh, uh, she might not see it that way, but you would probably see it as very estranged from those views. So I, I don't know that she's would bring in all that many people from the left, but I could see her peeling off some Trump-type people, frankly. Um, there is a lot of love for her in um, in conservative media. I think going beyond what was just a... Obviously, there was appreciation for RFK Jr. in conservative media when it looked like he was just kind of hurting Biden from mm -hmm. within the Democratic coalition. As soon as he moved out, that it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Remember what this guy said about the Second Amendment? Mm -hmm. Remember what he, how he feels about environmental regulation? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Tulsi is pretty beloved. Um, and she might get some some favorable favorable coverage. And, and then obviously, I do think it seems like they're pretty in sync on, on where RFK Jr. wants to focus now on COVID tyranny and mandates. Um, frankly, even their foreign policy seems kind of in sync with the, mm -hmm. you know, non-intervention on Ukraine, that but a full-throated defense of Israel. That, yeah, exactly. That cuts both ways, because I do think that uh, Tulsi Gabbard might get more scrutiny for her, frankly, inconsistent views on Israel. Um, she brands herself as someone who's against the warmongers, who's against money flowing out of the door to these um, regime change wars, is what she often calls yes. and often talks to them about, but feels very differently about Israel, much like RFK Jr. Max Blumenthal has challenged Tulsi Gabbard to a debate on the issue of Israel-Palestine, which she has declined to take up on. And I do think that once she's in the spotlight, it might draw more attention to the inconsistencies within um, RFK Jr.'s own political program that drove so many people on the left who once sure. supported him away, just like so many people on the left who once supported Tulsi Gabbard have changed their mind as she's kind of reinvented herself politically. I think this will further drive away people on the left if they were interested in RFK Jr. Um, I, I think that was kind of happening anyway, given that there are other more 
down the line left kind of people in the race, um, if, you know, either on the within the Democratic side, like Marianne Williamson and Jane Uger, or the Green Party candidate or Cornell West. Um, there's a lot of places for the really left left person to go for this, you know, heterodox. Some formerly left views may be very concerned about COVID. This foreign policy view taking from the right, I think this is actually a strong move to lean into that strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and I could see, I could see the RFK Tulsi ticket pulling even more from uh, from the right. Now we should say this is just a rumor. This it's a good rumor. If he's going to announce while he's in Hawaii, that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Um, I don't know that Tulsi is actually signing up to do this because, like I said, she has a she's a Fox News deal. Um, she's just announced this partnership with uh, with Twitter that we just played that clip of. So that doesn't sound like gearing up for another foray into politics, but anything's possible. So many presidential candidates get this accusation lobbed at them. Um, is this just about a book deal? So many presidential candidates do have books coming out. So, you know, those things aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah. Campaigns are expensive. You have to fund them. Not everyone is a, is a billionaire candidate like a Bloomberg or a uh, uh, Steve um, uh, Phillips even is, I think, a billionaire. If not, Dean Phillips. Dean Phillips. Uh, if not a multi, 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 multi millionaire. I'm pretty sure he's a billionaire. Um, so, you know, that's not such a criticism. Mm -hmm. But if this just is a branding exercise, it's such a good branding exercise. If I, if I were judging this just on optics as opposed to whether or not ex it expands the political coalition, I'd give it an A+. Plus. So I am, I am scrutinizing it from that uh, perspective. It is also worth noting focusing on the new deal with Twitter X. And we'll talk about this in more depth in a different segment. But Twitter is under significant criticism for launching a purge against um, left-leaning accounts that have been very, very critical, uh, large accounts that have been critical mm. of U.S. foreign policy with respect to Israel. Uh, four or five of those accounts got uh, blocked last night in what seems to some people like a coordinated effort that's out of step with the values of Twitter. Again, we'll talk about that that in a different segment, but Green Greenwald and others who have been very consistent on the speech issue are raising questions about whether or not this issue is the red line that frankly mm. exposes so much of the rhetoric about having an investment in free speech as exactly that, just rhetoric. Yeah, we're going to delve into more of that a little bit later on the show, and we will have more rising right after this.